Let me, oh, which microphone you five? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you, Ryan. I'll go quickly. Do you know what ha hash algorithm was used on the machines? Was it MD5, SHA-256? I, I know it's probably out of your depth. I, I believe it was SHA-256, but, but I'll have to get with you individually to confirm that. Was the entire drive hashed? Uh, you're, 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 I'm going to have to get, Maybe get some different that. people with, with Fair you. enough. <laughs> unless the entire drive I'm, I'm, was... I'm the lawyer. <laughs> okay, understood. <laughs> unless the entire drive was hashed, unless you had source code to review, what we've done so far um, is, is inconclusive. I'm happy um, to send you that, and, and then we can take any feedback to, to improve those techniques thank going you. forward. Who, what's the first line of review for the signature match? Who is the person or, or group of people who review a signature in an elections office? Good question. So the, those bipartisan boards I mentioned, they have the power to appoint elections directors like Nancy Bourne in Muskogee County and then absentee ballot clerks. Um, so it's, it's, it's handled at, at the staff, at a staff level in, okay. in, in each county. And what type of training do they have? Um, the way training works in Georgia is we train the county election directors and then they train their staff. We did provide GBI training to every county elections director on, on signature matching uh, at the end of last year. Um, I think you know I've expressed some concerns about your settlement agreement, um, but one thing that's in the settlement agreement that has not been mentioned anywhere that I've seen is that you, um, or you agreed to allow and consider in good faith providing county registrars and absentee ballot clerks additional guidance and training materials to follow in comparing voter signatures will be drafted by the political party committees. And to clarify who the political party committees are, the De Democrat Party of Georgia, the DSCC, and the DCCC. So they did submit um, uh, 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 additional guidance for us to consider. We considered it and did not uh, send it to counties or utilize it for training. Thank you. Could you get us a copy of that? Sure. Thank you. Um, was there electronic software available for signature match, and was it used, and, or was, were there any counties that did not use it? It's my understanding that the Fulton Republican Board of Electors did not certify the election, primarily because the electronic tools that were available for the signature match were not used. Um, I know Fulton County was looking at what they could do electronically. Uh, there was nothing prohibiting them from, from using electronic means to, to check signatures. I know they were trying to do some additional things where they would put, they, they wanted us to give access to bots to the voter registration system to do some of that work. And we said, no, you can't do that. But there was nothing prohibiting them from doing electronic. Do you know if they actually did electronic signature verification? At one point they were considering it. I, don't, I honestly don't know if they executed. I think they did not. Is, is what I've heard about the Republicans not voting to certify because of that in Fulton County accurate? I'm, I've not heard that. It's, I, we know they did not vote to certify. Um, I had heard the reasons were, you know, some, some concerns about absentee ballot signatures. We're going to have investigators follow up with them to see what specifically so we can investigate those issues. You mentioned earlier, um, and I wrote it down, that it's a lot to ask of these election officials to go through the volume of absentee ballot signatures we've asked them to go through. And you mentioned that the secretary does not think that signature match is the best way to verify somebody's identity. Given those two things and given really the, the massive shift toward ABM in this election in particular it resulted in 1.3 million uh, signatures having to be approved, why not look at the signatures and have a third party look at the signatures to help guide us and help inform us as to whether or not your assertion is accurate, that it is a lot to ask of them, whether the secretary's assertion is accurate, that it's not the best way, and to give us the tools in our tool belt so that we know looking forward whether we got it right or whether we need to change it. So we're, we, we are looking at that from you know, any kind of individualized, specific complaint that we get. We're looking at it. Um, I think what, what people are asking us to do is let's just look at all of them, all the, you know, 1. 1. 1.6 million because, you know, there are some that weren't, that weren't returned. Um, you know, frankly, um, I'm not sure that's something we have the authority to do. I don't think that's appropriate uh, because, you know, we open our investigations based off of actionable complaints. Um, and I think when we do, as, as we do that, um, we will get information that we're happy to share about about how this process worked. To, to date, how many signatures have you all reviewed? So we haven't got to that, to that part yet. We are uh, talk, we, first we, you know, we get a complaint, we look at our system to see 
the, the main complaints we're reviewing regarding signatures are, I, I didn't vote absentee, I didn't request an absentee ballot, but when I showed up, they said I had. So what we look at is say, okay, did they actually request an absentee? Like I said, what we're seeing, what we've seen almost every time is they were on the rollover list. They had requested one earlier in the year, and they got one for this year because they had requested it, um, and, and they were in that, that bucket. And then uh, I believe we have also, then we, then we go to the county and say, hey, give us these documents. Um, so that's where we are to, to do the signature match. Give us the envelope or, or give us the, uh, the voter registration stuff on file so we can look at that. Actually, it wouldn't be an envelope, it'd be an application. But give us those documents so we can review them. I, I'm sure some people have. I haven't suggested looking at all 1.3 million. I think it would be valuable, highly valuable to pull a random sampling from multiple counties in this state just to know wh how close we got it and to put that into the hands of people who have been trained um, and have experience in handwriting analysis. The last the, the question point, I The point add. that I would make sure. on that too is, I think the point that, that you're probably suggesting is what we would do then if it doesn't match is follow up with the voter to see, hey, did, did you sign this? Because it's not really the point of did it match or not. The point is, did that voter sign it or not? Well, the, the point is that it should have been, they should have been sent to provisional ballot. That's the point, is that that ballot should not have been accepted and that ballot never should have been counted. The, the point would be is that the system failed us and we have potentially, to your point, we don't know conclusively, even if the signature doesn't match. What we do know conclusively the signature does not match is that that should have been a provisional ballot, not a ballot that was accepted. Um, you mentioned earlier that, that uh, we send ballots out of county if you move out of county. Um, I pulled for the three counties who were supposed to be here today, Fulton, Muskogee, and DeKalb. Um, we had about 20,000 ballots from those three counties alone sent out of state. Do you know how many ballots, absentee ballots for the entire state were mailed to addresses outside of the state of Georgia? No, but we can get that for you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.